Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. And today, we're going to talk briefly about the Dayton Audio Epic line of products and take a quick look at the larger sub of the two, the Epic E180 7-inch Extended Range Subwoofer. There's also some really exciting news to report. The Parts Express website has some new info up that sort of pertains to both the 7-inch and the 5.5-inch Epic drivers. And more on that in a minute. Now, the Epic drivers aren't new. They started shipping a little over a year ago, but I still haven't seen too many projects that have used them yet for some reason. One exciting new speaker project using the 5.5 inch drivers is Toyd's DIY Audio Epic Speaker Build, which uses two of the smaller Epic subs and a super nice CCS tweeter. It's a pretty cool looking design, and that's what I would consider a compact but pretty high end speaker. Besides sounding nice and clean, I'll bet that thing really pounds too. I figure it's probably a good performer because I have a little experience with that 5.5 inch Epic sub as well. If you haven't seen it, I did a video where I designed and built a small subwoofer using one of the 5.5 inch Epic drivers and two 8 inch passive radiators. I called that the Epic Small Cube Subwoofer. Yeah, really creative name, right? But check that video out if you haven't seen it. And I'll put links to both these videos in the description. In fact, that little sub ended up sounding so good. And I mean it. It totally blows me away each time I listen to it. But it sounded so good that I was really curious to see what its big brother could do. But, and here's the exciting part. Parts Express and Dayton Audio have recently put up preliminary information about matching passive radiators to the Epic line for both the 5.5 inch and 7 inch drivers. The product pages aren't fully populated. There are no TS specs up yet as of the making of this video. But word is that they're pretty close to being in stock and ready to ship out from what I understand. I believe they'll be testing some of that first shipment of passive radiators using their own in-house setup to derive the final specifications and then publishing the results shortly afterwards. So I don't think we'll have to wait too much longer for those. Now that's exciting news for me because while I was at the speaker design competition that Parts Express hosted this year in Springboro, Ohio, I picked up one of the 7 inch Epic subwoofers to pair with the new Dayton Audio 300 watt Class D plate amplifier. I've been messing around with that thing too. That thing's actually pretty cool. And it's surprisingly small as well. I have a big hand, yeah, but this thing is smaller than you'd expect it to be. I'll put it that way. It looks sort of big in the pictures online, but it's really not. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the specs on the new 7-inch Epic Passive Radiators. And I'm hoping that using two of them with one of the 7-inch Active Drivers will allow for a fairly small box size. This is all guesswork at this point because we don't have any of the specs yet, but... I think that line of reasoning sort of follows the normal convention that we see out there regarding small subwoofers and opposed passive radiators. I'm pretty sure that's how Parts Express expects these to be used too. In fact, I'd be surprised if they didn't end up making a CNC kit for these with matching passive radiators at some point. Who knows, maybe even matched up with that 300 watt subwoofer amplifier. I know Parts Express is marketing these as extended range subwoofers, and they are that, but they also perform really well as true subwoofers. Also, it seems that they may have settled on a price for the passive radiators, although that may change. It looks like they're pricing the smaller 5.5 inch Epic passive radiator at about $35 and the larger 7 inch version at around $40 each. And those are not bad prices at all if they stay that way. Like I said, that may change. The prices aren't actually listed directly on each product page, but thanks to a Tech Talk forum member, I was able to click on them indirectly as a package purchase or put all these products in your cart prompt at the bottom of the product page and get them into my cart that way. And those were the prices that came up. So we'll just have to wait and see on that one. So don't quote me on those numbers, okay? Well, let's go back in time a few minutes and get the seven inch Epic driver and the SPA 300-D subwoofer amp out of the box and hooked up so we can see what the Epic driver looks like in action. I'm using alligator clip wires to connect this, and since the Epic subwoofer has dual 4 ohm voice coils, I'm running them in series to present an 8 ohm load to the amplifier. Alright, I think my hookups are good. Let me turn the volume down, turn the amp on. We have cone movement. Turning the frequency up.
turning the frequency down. Let's see how low we can get it. That's all the way down. Ten hertz. I'm going to crank it up a bit more than that. Get it closer to twenty. Turn the volume up, see what it can do. Feel the desk shaking. There's a lot of excursion going on here. I've got a good angle to see how much the cone's moving. It looks to be a bit over an inch from peak out to peak in, just from my eyes. That's non scientific though. Crank it up a bit more. really moving. Don't smell anything yet. I smell a little something. I smell warmth coming from a coil of wire, but nothing bad. And now I'm really pushing it. That thing's really moving, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is fun. But just so you know, this SPA300-D amplifier, I'm about half volume on this. So, and this is connected in series, so these two 4 ohm coils on this sub are actually presenting an 8 ohm load to this, which is not this amplifier's most efficient mode of operation. This is a pretty hot input. This is the Marlin P. Jones frequency generator, which is uh, it's a pretty cool little device. I recommend every kind of hobby guy that's in the speaker building get one of these, because I didn't know how much I needed this until I had it. but. Yeah, this sub's a little beast, just like its little brother. Woo! That thing is flappy lapping. I'm gonna stop there. Sounds a little strange. All right, that was fun. So stay tuned for that video. The Epic Triple Seven subwoofer. I don't know, I'll have to think about a name for that, but keep your eyes peeled for that one, hopefully coming soon. If the passives work well with the active driver in a fairly small enclosure, I'm going to try and get that video out rather quickly. If that's the case, then that'll be pretty cool. We'll have two new Dayton audio products to talk about in one project. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.